I was told Amnesia is a horror game, but to my surprise it was actually an FPS. So now I wonder, can Amnesia compete with Call of Duty, even though it's missing competitive matchmaking? What does Amnesia mean? No, I'm actually asking. Someone told me, but I forgot. When I think about the game, I think about the Amnesia Gold Rush back in the 1800s, when a man could go on YouTube, upload one minute of Amnesia footage and make enough money to buy a horse. When you start the game, the developers will tell you that you are supposed to immerse yourself in the story and not focus on winning. But they are a bit biased, and I'm a rebel, so this is my Amnesia setup. The game starts with our main character saying his name is Daniel seven times. Daniel is suffering from memory deficit, usually caused by psychological trauma or physical damage to the temporal lobe. <sighs> if only there was an easier way of saying that. Our first quest is to follow this somewhat tasty looking pink stuff. As we follow the liquid, Daniel remembers his first memory, that he's the world limbo champion. Eventually we get to this letter from himself. Daniel, it's me, you. If you are reading this, that means you have lost your memory. Yes, I know, it's the second time it happens. But at least this time, we didn't wake up in a police station. But listen mate, I need you to find Baron Alexander and kill him. He's in the inner sanctum. Should probably have killed him before I drank the memory losing drink and knew the way, but I didn't think that far. Also, could you check on the stove? I'm like 90% sure I turned it off. So we have to go to the inner sanctum. Where is that? Like Frictional's other game, Bioshock, you hear old conversations as you walk around. And in one of these conversations, you learn that the inner sanctum lies beneath the very stone of the castle, which is a very fancy way of saying it's in the basement. But oh no, the way is blocked by this somewhat tasty looking goo. What do we do now? Oh, I know, we should produce industrial acid. It's the only logical action. So we go to the laboratory, where we find out that Baron Alexander tried to create artificial life energy by throwing random things in acid, but he gave up when he realized that chemistry is hard, and he moved all the chemistry ingredients to the wine cellar so he can revolutionize wine. The wine cellar door is locked, so we have to search for the key in the archives. Danny, the main character, used to be an archaeologist. Right now he's uncovering mysteries, but he used to uncover dinosaur bones. We find diary entries from Daniel's archaeology trip to Algeria. There are three pages about his findings and 78 about how the airport lost his luggage. The diary tells the story of him getting trapped in a tomb and finding a mysterious blue orb. Daniel immediately assumes that the orb is alien. Yes, he's one of those people that ruined the History Channel. Yay, wine cellar key! Welcome to the wine cellar. As you can see, it's very dark. That's kind of amnesia's thing. There are two ways to get light. One is through tinder boxes. Tinder boxes are probably Alexander's greatest obsession because the castle has 148 tinder boxes. Jesus Christ! I own zero and I get along just fine. The other way is the lantern, but it runs on oil, so I didn't want to use it because I care about the environment. But I didn't think I would run out of tinder boxes. Work, goddammit, work! But I did. A lot. So I had to use the lantern. I guess Daniel's memory loss made him forget that you can carry candles. I also guess that he forgot that it's not normal to have telekinetic powers. If you stand in the dark for too long, you lose your sanity. If you go completely insane, things get very different. In the wine cellar, we find a bunch of useless items and royal water acid. Then we mix the useless stuff with the royal water acid to create normal acid. We had to downgrade so our bucket doesn't melt. The acid works! Yay! This is the refinery. Here we have our first encounter with the gatherers. The iconic villains that makes you go, oh, that's it? Until you actually play the game. They like to steal living creatures, probably to bring them to Alexander, because he's lonely. He lives in a castle so big it could be divided into states. The refinery is very short. You enter the cellar archives, then things go dark and it's full of water. This is what happens when you buy a massive castle and save money on plumbing. And there is a monster in the water that follows you. Warning. 
The following segment has been deemed extremely stressful. Please enjoy the calming sounds of Pushelbell. Don't close, don't close, don't close! Spin, spin, spinly spin! Why would you install this? Seems very impractical! How do you open doors? I hate you, Frictional! Of course there is more water! Did they build this castle on a lake? The castle has an elevator. I'm guessing that's where the plumbing money went. But the elevator is offline. First we need the key to the machine room. Ah! First person platforming. We meet again, my old nemesis. Yay, machine room key. The machine room is a two part puzzle. The first part is a math puzzle. Ugh. The second part is where you collect a bunch of items and put them in the machine. Ugh. Hello, Sven. I need your help with another puzzle. Hans, I can't help you now. I'm playing a new MMO. Oh, why am I doing a fake Swedish accent? While searching for the parts to the machine, we find more diary entries from Daniel. Apparently he returned to London from Algeria and everyone he knows is dying. He thinks it's because of the blue orb. Could be something else though. There must be hundreds of curses in Algerian tombs. We fixed the machine and now we are in this claustrophobic elevator. The biggest surprise right now would be if nothing went wrong wrong. Ah, of course. Welcome to the prison. Not a dungeon. In a flashback conversation, Alexander says anyone who calls it a dungeon will be sued for defamation. To get to the next level, we need to get through this hole. But Daniel is too big. I never solved this puzzle. I searched for a solution and kept walking. Eventually, Daniel had lost enough weight to get through. This tunnel is very scary. I bet we are going to meet a grotesque tunnel monster. And we are out. I guess we're going to explore more prison. Yippee. In this part of the game you get lost. The gatherers are still a bit scary, but they get way less scary when you realize they have the intelligence of a six month old infant. We find diary entries from Daniel about coming to the castle and showing Alexander the orb. He says Daniel has gotten a curse from the orb, but it can be removed for a hefty price of 400 euros, but Daniel can't afford that because euros hasn't been invented yet. Finally we stop being lost and enter the cistern. What is a cistern some of you might be wondering? Well, you see, it's the old Latin word for Burger King. This part is really disturbing. Daniel will order something and when the cashier gives you your food, she says enjoy your meal and Daniel automatically responds, you too. <laughs> It's the first time Amnesia actually gets scary, so we quickly run to the back door and enter the morgue located next to the Burger King. We need to enter the sewer, but it's filled with a mushroom gas. But there is a vaccine in the morgue, but instead of looking for it, Daniel has the brilliant idea of injecting himself with the blood of a recently deceased corpse. Not gonna question it, because it worked. In the sewers, nothing happens. You guys wanna know why this game got destroyed by Call of Duty and we only got half a sequel instead of a new one every year? First of all, it's set in Prussia. No one likes Prussia, that's why it doesn't exist anymore. It should be set in modern day New York. Replace Daniel and the gatherers with Navy Seals and terrorists. Also, The Dark Descent is a stupid subtitle. I would call it Amnesia. Ground mission, dark... Dark Aqua Zero. Daniel climbs out of the sewer. Welcome to the nave. Here you meet Agrippa and he's like, Hello Daniel, can you create a tonic for me? All you need is mushrooms and saliva from the Vase monster. If you want to know how we came up with the tonic, don't ask. Also, if you want to enter the inner sanctum, you need a second orb. Find six orb pieces and connect them. You should be able to find them next to unique 3D objects. We find another entry, and it tells us Alexander explained to Daniel that to delay the curse, you could torture and kill people. So Alex brings in prisoners, and Daniel does that. But then, like, when you listen to a song enough times, you start to like it. Same thing happened to Daniel, but with torture. So one day, Alexander tells him, Daniel, you have completely lost it. Also, I'm a supernatural being from another dimension. Our kind can live forever. Guess how? By eating tinder boxes. How did you? You have 150 tinder boxes and zero matches. Screw you, I'm going to return to my own dimension. Suck on my 300 year old balls. Okay, I'm going to kill you, but after seeing that, 
I need the amnesia potion. Next to stuff Daniel has used for torture, we find orb parts. Then Daniel gets captured and put into a cell. Fortunately, this wall has a self-destruct button, and the key to this dungeon is in a pipe. Maybe things are finally going up for old Daniel. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! Uh, some more important plot stuff is revealed, but it's not important. Now we have the tonic. We give it to Agrippa and he tells us to cut off his head. Now we have a head. Wait, carrying around a head, acid in a bucket, a curse, historical, Amnesia is a remake of Monkey Island. But unlike the original, Amnesia has three endings. When you enter the inner sanctum, Alexander will say, Huh, good versus evil, Daniel. Doesn't matter, because I'm flying. I bet you're really jealous. To get the bad ending, don't do anything, Alexander will return to his world and then Daniel wakes up and it was all a dream. That's why it's called the bad ending, because of bad writing. To get the revenge ending, you have to disrupt the ritual and then spray Alexander with root beer, this is of course the original ending. And finally to get the good ending, you put the head in the portal, then you travel among the stars and the head talks to a guy. This might be very confusing and it doesn't help that I stopped explaining the story 5 minutes ago. I actually don't think I think I've spoiled a single thing in this entire video, and that is the Killian experience. Like, subscribe, etc. The next video, the next garbage review, I mean, uh, would be the one year anniversary of the channel. So I'm going to do an obscure game. So recommend obscure games.